Now that we've learned about productive workspaces using 5S, let's learn about how to practically implement that into a work environment, which starts with balancing, dividing work between people. The Japanese word for that is Yamazumi. I'll mention that now because you may hear it in industry, but it's not very common. So let's dive straight in. So let's imagine we're looking at a process involving five different people, all doing different steps of the process. This could be within a service environment or equally a production line. The entity or items passing from the left to the right through each operator carrying out their set tasks. What do you think is the problem with this current situation? Well, because of the different process times, some people are likely working a lot harder than others, so operator 2 is likely to either overproduce with their free time or spend a large proportion non-value adding in the form of waiting. Operator 4 is working the hardest and likely overburdened, leading to stress, injuries, high levels of absenteeism and is likely annoyed at the fact that they're working harder than everyone else. These sort of problems exist within all businesses regardless of their nature. What we really want to know is how many operators do we need in an ideal world and what can we do to help balance the line, so balance the work and remove this variation between operators. Remember the link between Muda, Mura and Muri. Muda, waste, is often the symptom of overburden, Muri, and variation, Mura. Balancing helps reduce both of these with the aim to reduce muda waste. Well, the first thing you need to do is calculate the tact time. Remember, tact is available time divided by customer demand. So if there are 480 minutes of available working time in a day and the customer demand is 32 products a day, the tact time is 15 minutes. The next thing we need to do is calculate the total work content across the entire process. To do this, we sum all the individual process times and this would equal 53 minutes, so 10 plus 5 plus 14 plus 16 plus 8. This is the work content required across the entire process. Now that we have the total number of work content, we divide it by the tack time. This tells us theoretically how many operators do we need to do the work. The reason I say theoretically is because in reality, we don't want to fully load each operator to 100% utilisation levels. First and foremost, you don't want to overburden workers. And as, soon as, and as we have learned in the Kingsman equation, when we have utilisation close to 100%, any process variation can cause exponential delays. For that reason, I would suggest doing another calculation now where we multiply the tack time by utilisation factor, for example, 0.9, which would be 90% utilised. This new value can be called the target cycle time. If all operators are working to this target cycle time, you are aware that they, are, they have 10% breathing space built in to account for the small levels of process variation. Calculating the number of operators for this new target cycle time provides an adjusted number of operators value. This adjusted number of operators is what we'll be using going forward. It is important, however, to clearly show the theoretical number of operators to make sure that this adjusted number shows that it has inbuilt slack. In reality, we cannot have a fraction of an operator, so we need to round this number 3.92 up to its nearest integer, so we therefore need four operators to carry out the work. Here are some guidelines that help identify how many operators we need based on the adjusted number of operators value. If the decimal is smaller than 0.3, then we typically do not add an ad additional operator but instead have a focused workshop to reduce any non-value add, i.e. waste, whether that be transport, motion or waiting, to help reduce the total time. The reason for this is we really want to avoid having an operator 
who is busy for less than 30% of the time and waiting for the rest. If the decibel is between 0.3 and 0.5, then we'll typically not add an operator to start with, and after a set time interval, say two weeks of improvements, we can then reassess, but hopefully by that time we will have eliminated that amount of non-value add time. If the decimal is more than 0.5, then I would suggest adding the operator, as is the case with this example, but still bring awareness to the fact that this operator is not fully loaded and keep trying to drive waste from their process. So if we have four operators, how can we best distribute the work between them? Well, firstly, we need to break down the process into much smaller steps. Then it can be distributed between the different operators. Once the process has been split into different tasks, we need to try and distribute the the work across each operator, starting by trying to get each operator as close to the target cycle time as possible. From this example, we can see that the first three operators closely match the target cycle time, but the fourth operator has a bit less work content. So what would we do if the final operator had even less utilization? Well, whenever you distribute work, you should always aim to fully load each operator up to the target cycle time. The worst thing to do would be to spread the work evenly, as soon people will fill their available time with non-value adding activities to keep themselves busy. That is just human tendency to keep people busy or appear to be busy. If for example you have a situation like this, where there is a fraction of an operator's workload, but after two weeks of continuous improvement efforts, you still haven't been able to eliminate their workload. What should you do? Well, the key is to make sure continuous efforts are made to reduce non-value add activities within all tasks to the point in which the additional overflow operator is not required. This fourth partially loaded operator is known as a Mura operator. They absorb all the variation themselves to enable the other three operators to carry on with their process. In their free time, they can conduct TPM or improvement activities, as well as help the other three operators, should they have any abnormal variation. The Mura operator can then identify the root cause for this variation and put solutions in place to help prevent it happening again. The aim should always be for the Mura operator to make themselves not required by carrying out Kaizen continuous improvement activities. Once it reaches a point where they are not required within the process, they can then be redeployed elsewhere to add value in another process or in a different work cell. So before we summarise, I want to just make you quickly aware that in many lean textbooks, what you'll read is they'll actually balance the line to the ideal theoretical um, number of operators to the tack time. We have purposely taught you to do it towards a targeted cycle time that takes into account utilization because the last thing you want to do is overburden operators and we know from the Kingsman equation that as utilization gets near 100% delays and queues exponentially grow. In the next module we'll be learning about how to practically transform what you've learned in this cell balancing into a physical environment and there's a bit of a spoiler the design is going to be very different to what I think you can imagine.